Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. So I'm going to be giving you a mini tour of the Pino Azura in hopefully less than five minutes. So let's get started. So the Azura is one of Pino's medium sized ships. It was built in 2010. It's actually due for a refurbishment next year, but this video was taken in 2024 as part of our Canary Island cruise. So we're going to be starting bottom up with the lowest deck being deck 5. Deck 5 is mostly accommodation but also home to the bottom part of the atrium. This includes a beautiful gallery which actually changed a bit over the holiday which is really interesting. So it's definitely worth a look, maybe not quite look at the price tags. Deck 5 is also home to countless amount of shopping opportunities including this kind of everyday shop which includes all your basics but also some P&O merchandise. And you've also got the library which is actually a really nice place to relax and also got some books that you can loan out. Deck 5 also has a Costa Coffee location which has quite good priced Costa Coffees and drinks. So going up to Deck 6, Deck 6 has kind of got the cool vibes of the Pinot Zero. It's home to the Playhouse which has amazing shows and also Brody's which is the iconic P&O bar. Brody's is definitely the place to be for casinos, some games such as pool and darts and also some live music. Our main dining room is also located on Deck 6. We were in the Oriental which was lovely, honestly really really good and I definitely recommend going to the main dining room especially on celebration night. Deck 6 is also kind of the information hub which has got the reception as well which has got information and even more shops. I would say a lot of the shops were a little bit more higher end but there was a Pandora which we definitely made the most of. And we're now moving on to Deck 7 which is kind of the wine and dine um, deck of the ship which includes a lot of the bars and also the top area of the playhouse. So one of the bars that this includes is the glass house which is a bit more of a fancy bar um, which includes some amazing drinks and also speciality wines. We were also really impressed by the amount of seats in around the atrium area. It was really interesting to see the amount of areas that you can sit down. And usually you don't actually have to order the drinks in order to sit down, but there will usually be a waiter around if needed. We did find the shops had a little bit of a smaller amount available compared to the Iona, as of course this is a smaller ship. And moving on to the Malabar, which is also a really lovely bar. It has a bit of a Indian Bollywood type of vibe to it. Ironically, Malabar is right next to Sindhu, which is a speciality dining location where you can spend your onboard spend on. They've actually got really, really cheap options and curries, which were apparently really, really good. And not to mention, Deck 7 is the prom deck, so it's got the little outside area which goes around the ship. Deck 7 is also home to the Manhattan, which is another kind of theatre area of the ship and also an area that you can get some drinks. Oh, we watched several shows in the Manhattan, including a comedian and also a singing show. And of course, I definitely recommend the Blue Bar as a location to sit on celebration night and this is where you get, you get your free drinks. So deck 8 all the way up to deck 14 is basically just rooms. We actually had a lovely superior balcony room. You can watch the video and tour here. So deck 15 and above are kind of the family area of the cruise ship and it includes the buffet and some amazing swimming pools. Dining on the top deck also include a pizza and burger area which was really good and some also bars. The buffet has an array of food pretty much all day. There are some half an hour breaks within this um, but there is lots of different options available until about midnight. The really good thing about the buffet and the dining is you can kind of take it where you want including the room and outside. So there are three pools, as I said, the centre one is basically the family pool where there's lots of activities and there's also some hot tubs which are super lovely as well. Towels are available all the time and you can just put them back in the little bins. And talking about family activities, this um, cruise ship is a little bit less family orientated. There are lots of activities just at the top, including a basketball court, a little golf area and a few other ball game activities. Now, unfortunately, we never actually drunk in the Planet Bar, but it's a really iconic part of the Pinot Azura. As well as this, the upper decks are home to the spa and gym, which we never actually went in. Slightly disappointed in myself. And also the wedding venue, which was pretty cute. One thing to definitely look out on with the spas is during our port days, they are a lot cheaper, so definitely keep an eye out for deals then. And despite not actually ever working out, the gym looked really well equipped and with lots of different space and areas. Finally, leading up to the Oasis Pool, which is available for all of the adults, it's a bit more of a quieter location. Thank you so much for watching my video of the Pino Azura. I hope this gives you a little bit more of a understanding of the ship and the facilities available. Make sure to like and subscribe. Thank you.